<laughs> Are you a fan of orangutans? Um, I love orangutans. Who, who, who doesn't like them? Well, Do you like orangutans? I love orangutans. But that's the only thing I know about sustainable eating is that I should probably avoid palm oil to save the yeah. orangutans. Orangutans? Yeah. Orangutans. 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 Anyway. How much of an impact does what I eat have on the environment? So we know that globally our food systems contribute more greenhouse gas emissions than any other sector. If you put food and food systems together, it, it contributes more climate change related gases into the atmosphere than all land, sea and air transport combined. It's also land clearing, biodiversity loss, so loss of critical species, use of fresh water, release of chemicals into the ocean, depletion of ocean resources, including seafood. So all of these big challenges facing our planet are deeply linked to the food we do or don't consume. It feels like it's just an extra thing I have to worry about as a shop. The good news is that what is good for you is actually also what's good for the planet. Often when I hear the word sustainably sourced, it's usually in context of seafood, and I always get confused as to which one I should get. Should I be buying farmed fish or wild caught fish? So unfortunately, it's not that simple. Right. So for some fish, farmed is more sustainable. Right. For other fish, farmed is less sustainable. Go to the certification website, and it has all information on wherever you live, what are the more sustainable options at, at that time of year. That's probably the easiest thing. Or just speak to your 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 you know, your fishmonger, they'll often know what's in season and what's not. Did you know that fish, just like fruit, are seasonal? Anyway, that's a little side note for you. The size matter? So it is sustainable, right? The reason for that is because they tend to be lower in the food chain. And the lower in the food chain you go, more fish that eat plants and not fish that eat other fish. But the, the higher in the food chain we go towards like shark and tuna and salmon, the more fish it takes to produce a kilogram of that fish. The more that the fish eats other fish, the less efficient that is as a source of seafood in our diets. Is it safe to assume that if I buy organic, then I'm also buying sustainable? No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, so, so organic is basically a certification and it means that they're not using chemicals synthetic chemicals and a bunch of other things in the process of producing the food. That's one element of the sustainability sort of um, picture. You know, you then got how much water is it using to grow that food? How much carbon dioxide is it, is it emitting in growing and transporting and, and storing uh, that food? So seasonality becomes really important because you're buying something when it's in season as opposed to having it sit in cold store in a big refrigerator for six months, which even if it's organic, sitting in a, in a refrigerator for six months will use a lot of carbon, will use a lot of energy to do that. All of these things are elements that are really, really important to the sustainability of food that are not necessarily reflected if simply the food is organic or not. I mean, this is gonna sound like a dumb question, but how do I know it's in season? The way I do it is basically, if you walk into a green grocer and also very often a supermarket, the things that are abundant, the things that are on sale, the things that are like packed out at the front as you walk in, those are usually the things that are in season because they're available to the supermarkets at a, you know, there's huge um, supply and therefore it reduces the cost. So kind of, you know, being, letting the supermarket and what's on sale and what looks fresh guide you in terms of what is in season is um, easier than trying to remember a list. Which foods have the biggest impact? So if you're at the supermarket, the things to be avoiding would be first and foremost processed foods or really heavily processed foods. These sorts of things are, you know, hugely carbon intensive to produce um, and they're not terribly good for your own health. And people, I think, are increasingly understanding that, that probably the most carbon intensive part of our diet apart from the really heavily processed foods, is red meat um, and particularly beef and lamb. It's about not necessarily cutting it out if you want to eat beef or lamb. It's about buying the best quality you can afford, 
eating it less often and really enjoying it and not wasting any when you do consume it. So you know I've got a limited budget. Um, yep. What can I concentrate my sustainable efforts on this week as homework? So the week ahead, I want you to eat in a planetary health diet way. I want you to eat half your plate fruit and veg. Make fruit and veg seasonal and I want you to think carefully about the, the type of meat you're eating, the quality of meat and the quantity, so that you're eating meat and seafood and dairy in a way that is not only best for your health, Motaz, but also best for the planet. Yeah, so our parents were right all along. Just eat your veggies. Seriously. Yeah. You know, you think about the Mediterranean diet. Everyone loves the Mediterranean diet. But actually, the, the Mediterranean diet is exactly what my nonna ate in the 19... 30s back in like southern Italy when they had no money and so naturally they had a little bit less meat mm. and that part of the world has some of the longest lifespans in the world. They also have siestas so. <laughs> no, that's a different country. Yeah.